From the food we eat, the air we breathe, the land we dwell, to the health of our body and mind, and the well-being of all things in the universe. Unlock the science with Chula Radio Plus. I'm Lawan Jira Suladet, and this is Unlock the Science. With the unceasing efforts on scientific research and technological development, humanity is equipping more and more methods and tools to make our lives healthier, happier, and more secure. Recent advancement in molecular biological research has provided us with a momentous breakthrough that ushers in the new age of modern healthcare, known as genomic medicine. Genomic medicine is a new revolutionary medical trend. Which, according to researchers, is going to fundamentally change the ways conventional medicine diagnoses and treats patients. Many studies have claimed that genomic medicine can greatly improve the accuracy of disease diagnosis, increase efficiency of medical treatment, and can also be adapted to develop new medicines. And curing techniques to beat critical illness such as cancer. But before we delve into the scientific explanation of genomic medicine and investigate its usefulness and properties, we should understand the general scientific term of genome first. If we consider ourselves as a machine, the genome is the blueprint of the machine. It is the biological building blocks. Of every living being ever existed, each genome contains the biological information in the form of DNA, which is needed to build and maintain that organism throughout its life. According to the National Human Genome Research Institute of the United States, if all the DNA from a single human cell was stretched out end to end. It would make a six-foot-long strand, composed of a six-billion-letter code. Each letter of our DNA determines the specific traits that makes everyone a unique person. Here is where genomic medicine comes into play. According to a fact sheet from an international health insurance company, Aetna International, genomic medicine is an emerging medical discipline. That involves using genomic information of an individual person as a part of their clinical care, which includes diagnosing the sickness and selecting choices of medical treatment. As each individual person has his own unique genes and genetic traits, these traits are closely linked with the state of our health. Some people naturally have good eye vision, while some others get nearsightedness. Since the young age, and have to wear eyeglasses all the time. The same things go for health conditions such as obesity, risk of stroke, heart disease, or even some kinds of cancer. This is why your doctor may ask you about your family's health record to get a glimpse of genetic-related health issues that may pass on in your bloodline. This logic also applies to the efficacy of medicine and treatment methods. Which can vary from one person to another. Therefore, learning about our genetic makeup can ensure that we will get the most suitable treatments or medicine to our body. In conclusion, genomic medicine is how doctors apply the genomic factors to improve the diagnosis, treatment, and prevention of illness, which result in higher efficacy and more personalized healthcare for all of us. Today. We are going to talk to Professor Dr. Warasak, Chot Lersak, Head of Molecular Genetic in Medicine Research Unit, Faculty of Medicine, Jhulalongkorn University. Our reporter Brad Ruchi Wanarom discusses with him in more detail about the research and development of genomic medicine and its adoption in Thailand's healthcare system. What actually is the genomic medicine? Could you please explain me more about the background of this medical science? Hey, great! That's a a, a great question. Genomic medicine. Uh, actually, there are three terms, uh, three similar terms, that yeah. many 
people use them interchangeably, but actually they're not actually uh, exactly the same. Uh, genomic medicine, personalized medicine, and precision medicine. Uh, I, I would like to explain uh, more about this, these three terms uh, so, so we can uh, talk further. And uh, these three terms, even though they are similar, they have different connotations and implications. Uh, allow me to start with uh, our current practice, our current medicine. What we use uh, for uh, real medical practice today, uh, the evidence for uh, practice today, the best or gold standard uh, usually came from a research methodology that we call uh, randomized control trials, or in yes. short, RCT, randomized control trial. Uh, what we do with this method is, uh, for example, if you want to uh, determine whether a new drug, let's say drug X, is better than uh, the drug that we use today, let's say it's drug A. Uh, drug A X is, is it better than drug A? We enroll uh, a thousand participants and then randomize them into two groups, 500 and 500. And then by randomization, these two groups expected to be similar, no differences statistically. Then we, uh, if the first group with drug A and give the second group with drug X and see the result. So that's uh, what we call randomized control trials. Mm -hmm. So we now incorporate an important factor, important information of each individual. We use genetic data in a data of each individual into account before we prescribe medicine or we when uh, before we treat anyone. So we move from population average to genomic medicine, meaning we practice medicine uh, using all the evidences that we use today, plus genetic data, plus information in our own, in each individual DNA. And that's what we call genomic medicine. For precision medicine, it's similar to genomic medicine, but it's incorporate even more data, not just population average and genetic data. We add environmental factors and behavior of that in, in individual into account too. So basically precision medicine is population average plus genomic plus behavior plus environmental factors. That's precision medicine. Uh, yes. To give a personalized uh, medicine. So these three terms, you can see that, that they are similar, but not exactly the same. Mm. Yes. So it can help us uh, boost the quality of the healthcare, right? Oh, yes. That, that's the expectation. Uh, we believe that, well, the, the medical and scientific community believe that uh, the next frontier is moving from population average to genomic, to personalized and precision medicine. Because now uh, the, the, well, the drugs and treatments today are so good uh, that to find a new medicine that can improve from let's say 95 to 97, it's, it's very difficult. So the, the a way to go is to uh, take into account individual factors, such as genomic uh, and behavior and environment. Because we take into account of genomic information of uh, each individual, so it's going to give us more accurate diagnosis, mm. not just a population average. And that specific, that, that accurate, definite diagnosis probably going to lead to a specific treatment and also to reduce costs of that individual treatment and also reduce costs of the whole health system. That's the expectation. 
three things, better diagnosis, specific treatment, and reduced costs. And what made you interested in genomic medicine at the first place? Oh, actually, uh, I started my career as a pediatrician, uh, and I uh, went to further my study in clinical genetics. And, and during that time, sequencing technologies has, well, leaped. It, it's advanced so fast. Uh, and I, I can see that with this advanced technology, we can use it, we can maximize its potential for uh, medicine and healthcare and public health. So basically, I, uh, it's an opportunity of the technology and, and being a physician. So I'm really impressed and, and in it uh, to trying to maximize its potential. Are there any example of using genetic medicine in Thailand? Oh, yes, yes, there are a lot. Uh, the first area is, of course, genetic disease. Genetic diseases individually are rare, maybe rarer than one in a hundred thousand or even less than one in a million. Uh, and, and because they are individually rare, the way to diagnose them is quite difficult. Uh, after we can give them a definite diagnosis, a specific treatment follows. The second area is cancer. All cancers in any patients of any organs uh, are genetic disease. There must be genetic alteration in any cancer. Uh, and if we can determine what went wrong in that cancer, we can give them a proper a drug to fight the cancer. Mm. The, the third area uh, is non-communicable disease uh, for such as obesity, hyperlipidemia, hypertension, these things. Genetic factors play an important role for these uh, non-communicable diseases. So if we know which individual is susceptible for which disease, we can tailor a medical surveillance for them. We will take a short break now. You are listening to Unlock the Science on Chula Radio Plus. Human genome has been a fascinating wonder. As scientists have been unable to decode it all yet. And for a very long time, it remained as a mystery. No more. In May of 2021, a group of scientists announced that they have finally completely decoded the entire human genome, a readout of over 3 billion letters across 23 human chromosomes. The unlocking of human genome is pushing a new boundary of our understanding of genomic medicine. And this could be a prime opportunity for us to understand more on rare genetic and undiagnosed diseases and find better methods to cure them. According to the European Union, a rare disease is a disease or condition that affects no more than 1 in 2,000 population. Currently, there are over 6,000 known rare diseases, and 8 in 10 of these rare diseases are linked to a genetic cause. Vice versa, 99% of genetic conditions are seen as rare disease as well. The serious disease that led to gradual paralyzing of the entire body that Stephen Hawking, the renowned theoretical physicist, suffered and died of later is one prominent example of rare genetic diseases. The disease is amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, or commonly referred to in the United States as Lou Gehrig's disease. We are going to resume the discussion with Professor Dr. Warasak, Chod Lersak, on the role of genomic medicines, on how to diagnose and cure those genetic and rare diseases. So you have mentioned rare uh, genetic disease. Could you please let, explain to me more about uh, the rare and genetic disease, please? Oh, yes. Um, the definition of rare is arbitrarily. It depends on... Uh, 
countries, uh, continents. Basically, it's it's not common. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some define them as less than one in two thousand. That that's probably most majority of genetic diseases gonna fall into this area. It defined by prevalence of disease. It's not defined by the cost or, or uh, etiology of the disease. In countries with good statistics, um, they show that probably about five to eight percent of population are affected by these rare uh, genetic diseases. Yeah, yeah in, in Thailand, we believe it's a similar uh, figure. You mm -hmm. will see news uh, from time to time about yeah. children or patients with, uh, well, unique or unusual manifestations, such as a skin, like a snake scale. Actually, those are genetic disease. Or yeah. a child with uh, abnormal head shape, tile with, well, eight fingers uh, in each hand. These are all rare diseases. And how hard to diagnose this disease? In, in the name of the group, rare. So yeah. physicians have not that uh, experience with these rare diseases because they are rare. Yeah. So usually uh, these patients going to need seven years because, before they get a definite diagnosis. Mm. Uh, bec uh, let, let me give you an example, a scenario. Uh, a child with an, a very unusual manifestation. So uh, uh, parents uh, take them to a pediatrician. Pediatrician A uh, haven't seen this before, so he referred the, the child to pediatrician B. Pediatrician B referred to a tertiary center. Uh, then tertiary center uh, consulted a, a specialist, a neurologist, a cardiologist, uh, and also pulmonologist. Finally comes to a geneticist. Uh, that takes many years. And geneticist needs a few more years to figure out what has happened to, uh, to this child, uh, already seven years. But if we have this technology, sequencing technology, we can determine all genes in, an, in any individual. So that's gonna reduce the time from manifestation to diagnosis from years to weeks. And how serious? Uh, is the rare disease? Oh, rare disease, the, the, it, it has a very wide spectrum of seriousness. It could be very mild uh, with no disturbing in daily routine life. Uh, another spectrum it could be very serious. Uh, they probably incompatible with life. They cannot even they would be born normally, and some even die in utero in, uh, when the mother got pregnant, they disease at that stage. So the spectrum is, is very wide, from I nothing see. to very serious. Mm -hmm. And how genetic medicine can cure their disease? That's another story. Mm -hmm. uh, medicine now, science now, is trying to treat genetic disease uh, not just by symptomatic, but treat them at the, the very primary abnormality by changing the genetic defect to normal, to healthy gene. Mm -hmm. And we now have tool that just got a Nobel Prize, the CRISPR-Cas9, the genomic editing tools. But it's still in uh, most of the diseases, these tools are in research and development. Uh, hopefully we, we can see genetic uh, in therapy coming into uh, medical practice soon. Uh, what about the recent uh, COVID-19 pandemic? 
can we apply genomic medicine technology to deter uh, this global crisis? If you uh, think about this pandemic, it's a very fast and advanced. It's because of this DNA genomics uh, knowledge and technolo technology that help human uh, race to fight this virus. Yes. Uh, the, the very first RNA sequence of this virus was identified in just a few months uh, from the first case, first reported case. And that helped uh, us to develop vaccine. So, so we sequenced the virus. We know what it looks like. Uh, we know what is it strengths, what is it weaknesses, how could the virus infected us, uh, the spike, it spike protein, so we can design our weapon, the mm -hmm. vaccine, to inhibit uh, its weapon, uh, the, the virus, uh, the spike protein. So I would say genetics play a very important role in fighting infectious disease. And not just uh, to, to, to develop vaccines, it's also help determine who is gonna get se severe manifestations mm -hmm. if they get infected with the virus. And well, even now about vaccine, we are trying to determine who is gonna get serious side effect from which vaccines. So there's an effort to determine who uh, having which genetic components is suitable uh, with which vaccines. And as we are seeing uh, more newly emerged uh, contagious disease, how can genomic medicine uh, be the uh, cure or treatment for such a new, new disease? The scientists in the field rely a lot on sequencing technology. Yeah. Uh, uh, for what we call is disease X, a new emerging infectious disease, or we call EID in short. So uh, the system is we have to have a surveillance uh, to get uh, feces or samples from wildlife animals uh, to determine whether the virus in these animals has changed whether it has a potential to infect human, uh, this and that. So that's the way we are uh, trying to put in the system to surveil uh, in the virus bacteria in nature. Uh, so we know at the very first step, if something is going to go wrong and trying to stop them at the very first stage. In the early days of modern medical science, Doctors usually study treatment methods and medicine that work best for the general population by testing their efficacy on sample population group. If a treatment or medicine can cure a disease in 9 out of 10 people, then it is good enough to be applied to patients in general. It is a one-size-fits-all method for treating people that works generally well until today. However, what if we are the minority, one in 10, that the treatment or drug that works for the majority does not work on us? Here are where genomic medicine comes in to fill the gap. Apart from scrutinizing each individual genome for more biological information to find the most appropriate treatment for each person, the environmental and behavioral factors are now also put into the equation to fully personalize medical treatment. Genomic medicine is also our effective tool to combat genetic and rare diseases as well. Although they are rare, European experts have warned that up to 1 in 17 people will be affected by a rare disease at some point in their lives. This revolutionary medical technique can save many lives and make much more people live a healthier life. Not only that, in the age of global pandemic, like what has happened in 2020 and 2021, 
genomic medicine can play a vital part in helping the humanity fight the novel COVID-19 outbreak. It could also help us understand more on the emergence of new infectious disease in the future. Like us, the human being, diseases evolve over time too. And Dr. Tsai would like to express our gratitude to Professor Dr. Warasak, Chod Lersak, of the Molecular Genetic in Medicine Research Unit, Faculty of Medicine, Jhulalongkorn University, for explaining the science behind genomic medicine, as well as his effort to establish a firm foothold of genomic medicine in Thailand. I hope you enjoy our program. You can listen to Unlock the Science on Jura Radio Plus at FM 101.5 every Saturday from 1 p.m. to 1.30 p.m. You can also listen and follow us on our website, curadio.jula.ac.th, and our Facebook page. And our program is also available as podcast. See you again next Saturday. Have a nice day. Unlock the Science is edited and produced by Sinfa Tunsorawud with Lawan Jirasurade as the program host and co-producer. 